I have this nightmare, you know, like some people, they have the same dream coming back, haunting them every once a year or so. They, they fall from a cliff or they get hit by a train or in my bad dream, I have a job. So somehow I get this fancy offer and I get flattered and I sign up and now I have a boss and I have a Monday morning meeting and all these things and I wake up and I realize oh, it was just a bad dream. I don't have a job. So I can go skiing if the weather is like this and if I feel for it because I don't have to ask anyone for permission. Today's topic is the gig economy and how to be your own boss. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the sun is not always shining and I'm not always skiing and, and I don't get paid to ski, unfortunately. But just because I don't have a job doesn't mean that I don't have work to do. Today I'm in London, one of these cities where the, the number of self-employed has actually outgrown the public sector. And while traditional office buildings are on a decline, uh, we can see that co-working spaces where entrepreneurs and freelancers and people in startups meet to collaborate are on the rise. A job is only a what. What do I do? And more importantly, what do I do to get paid? My answer to that is that I'm a speaker. I stand in front of people and I talk to bring food for thought, to challenge them and inspire them. That's what I do for money. But as you know, you need to start from the opposite direction. You need to start with a why. If you're not familiar with this, check out the link down below and listen to Simon Sinek in his world famous speech about how to start with why and why that is important to you. Or read his book. My why is to help people embrace change. And then how I do that and what I get paid to do have changed many times throughout my life and career and will continue to change just like any other job. Maybe I can meet more people like you now here online and then I don't need to travel as much anymore and uh, maybe in the future I will be referred to as a YouTuber rather than a speaker. Who knows? The big thing is that this drama of changes to your job will be less scary if you focus on your why rather than the what. So this is what I tell young people or parents when they ask about young people. Yeah, 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 you need to be good. It's crucial. Competition is fierce. But the only way to, to be good and become good is to do something that you love. So that's the most important thing you need to do. You need to find something you feel passionate about to find your why. Think of this the next time you meet someone new. Don't ask them what they do. Ask them why. Why do you work? Watch out though, this is a very provocative, very challenging question. What do you mean why I work? I have, I have rent, I have bills to pay. And yes, we all have bills to pay. We know all there is to know about our human needs from the work of Abraham Maslow. You remember the hierarchy of needs. Down here on the bottom you have the essentials like food, water, shelter, education, healthcare. You can translate all of those to money. But as you know, money is not enough. You want more, so you will climb and climb and then on top is meaning. So if you have that, if you have money and meaning, then life will be good. Make no mistake though, jobs are nowhere to be found in the Maslow hierarchy of need. We don't need jobs, we need money and meaning, and jobs are the how. That's the most common way to get money and meaning today. Doesn't mean that that can't change. I was talking to a friend the other day about this and he said, yeah, 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 but 99% of all people have a job. That's how we solve this. And I said, yeah, sure, but doesn't mean that it's the way it's always going to be. I mean, if you think of it from another dimension, the, the time perspective, 99% of, of the time human beings were on this planet. We didn't have jobs. I mean, if you go back a thousand years, everyone was a gig worker or a freelancer. You woke up in the morning and you solved your problems. That's what you were doing during the day. No one thought of such a thing as applying for a job or outsourcing the responsibility for solving my problems to somewhere else. If you think of this one step further, I mean, yes, if I do get a job and if I do actually outsource the responsibility for, for my work to someone else, what do I do the day he or she changes her mind? And believe me, that day will come. Remember I told you the, the job market will, will be in constant change and we will see new technology and robots and AI and all those things we hear about so much? Yes, of course we will. And that will be fine as long as you trust in your own ability to cope with change. 
the only reason to work for someone else um, and this is crucial if you're in HR I mean no such thing as a safe job anymore so the reason for me to join you that is if I truly believe that I will learn faster if I'm inside your organization rather than outside otherwise you are better off if you focus on how to build trust in your own ability to cope with change and trust me with the power of the internet and all these devices like now I'm, I'm shooting this video on a, on a phone on an iPhone this here that I'm doing right now you and I would have been impossible just 10 years ago not only to to shoot the video but to distribute it to reach you hundreds of thousands of dollars at least and now anyone can do it so it's fair to say that today anyone can manage the how and what as long as you know your why that's how to be your own boss i wish you the best of luck <laughs> oh yeah one more thing if you've been watching all the way to here then yes this was work too if you like these short speeches about future trends then please hit subscribe and i'll see you in the future